at the secret Arctic Biosystem Station, an infection occurs, resulting in the deaths of two scientists while a third suffers from unprecedented symptoms. The station's chief, Dr. Hadake, requests assistance from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Dr. Alan Farragut learns that one of the infected is his brother Peter and agrees to fly to the station. His team includes his ex-wife Julia, colleagues Sarah and Doreen, and Major Sergio. Sarah must determine the extent of the infection, Julia is to find the cause, Doreen will check the experimental animals, and Sergio will analyze the life support systems. En route, Sarah learns from Doreen the reason for Alan and Julia's divorce. It turns out, Alan caught his wife with his brother. Since then, they have not communicated. The helicopter arrives at the station, where the number of infected has not changed, meaning the virus is not airborne. After dropping off the team, the helicopter leaves as it is based nearby. In total, 106 scientists from 36 countries work at the base, but Alan's primary concern is to see his brother, whose vital signs are critical. Julia begins taking samples, while the head of security tells Sarah that he is Dr. Hatake's adopted son and is ready to do anything for him. At that moment it is discovered that Peter's blood is black. He attacks those around him but falls asleep after receiving a sedative. Doreen and Sergio inspect the laboratory where, according to security, experiments were conducted on rats, though they should have been on monkeys according to protocol. Their colleagues are examining bags with the bodies of the deceased, floating in a black liquid. But why is Peter still alive? While examining the rats, Doreen suddenly removes her protective suit. Now she is sure the virus is not airborne. At the same time, Sergio finds hairs in the sink drain, which Doreen immediately identifies as monkey hair. So why are they being lied to? Hatake assures Julia that Peter's field of work is mutagens and mutations, not viruses. Alan, meanwhile, examines his brother's cabin and finds a video diary. He shows Sarah a gesture Peter makes in the video their code, meaning, run away from here immediately. But then an alarm sounds, and the scientists discover Peter's disappearance and a hole in the ceiling. The security team goes in search of the fugitive. Meanwhile, Doreen and Sergio find a sealed section with hundreds of monkey cages, the doors of which have been broken from the inside. Suddenly, a small macaque attacks Doreen, which Sergio knocks out. But the animal's appearance is very unusual. At the same time, in a pipe, they find the body of one of the guards with a severed arm. Alan asks to lock all the base inhabitants in their rooms. Sarah suggests that the virus might be prehistoric, and Julia finds an unknown strain of it. Sergio sets up an individual antenna and communicates with someone on the mainland, after which he sees a large number of frozen monkeys around. Returning, he informs Hatake that their employers are unhappy with the doctor. The scientists realize that the virus does not kill the infected, but transforms them into something else. Using the severed arm of a guard, Peter gains access to the solarium. From there, screams are heard, and blood splatters on the windows. The scientists attacked by Peter say he pressed his mouth against them, as if he wanted to pass something on. Three of those, he communicated with, managed to escape. The security brings in the files of the three missing people, whom no one has seen since the escape. Alan suggests searching all the rooms. Doreen dissects the monkey and feels movement behind her, but sees no one, and Julia clearly hears sounds above the ceiling, where Peter watches her. The isolated station scientists are outraged by their detention, while Alan's group enters the room of the first missing person. At the same time as she comes to Doreen and asks to be taken to the helicopter, Julia is reviewing laboratory video recordings and sees shelves with rats falling by themselves. The guards catch the second fugitive, after which Alan is forced to explain the full danger of the virus to the world. He promises that his team will stay here until the problem is resolved. Sarah goes for medicine and is attacked by Peter, but she manages to close the doors and he leaves without touching her. At this time, Julia is again inspecting Peter's laboratory to replicate the scientist's last experiments. Meanwhile, an infected woman attacks Doreen, but she manages to escape. Alan realizes that Peter was trying to get painkillers for himself, which means there is still something human in him. Sergio follows Peter's trail and encounters him in a pipe. Later the unconscious man is pulled outside, but there are no visible signs of infection on him. Simultaneously, Julia repeats the experiments and witnesses the aggressive behavior of the vaccinated rats. Isolated scientists attack Sarah, demanding to be let outside. 
Alan removes his protective suit, proving his solidarity with them. Later, Julia suggests that the virus restructures the brain to create a perfect attack machine. Sergio catches one of the scientists preparing to escape, fearing to stay at the station. Unable to persuade the coward to return to base, the major kills him and hides the body in the snow. In the isolation ward, people deceive Sara and break out. At this time, Alan confronts Hatake and demands the truth. After the scientist leaves, Hatake pulls out an album filled with photos of Julia, then he removes his lenses and his eyes begin to glow. Julia is taking a shower and suddenly sees Peter reaching out to her with his lips. She tries to escape, but she can't. Later, Alan finds Julia and brings her to her senses, but she hides what happened. As he escorts her to her room, Alan encounters Peter, who asks his brother for help. 32 hours pass, and there is still no solution to the problem, which frightens people. Then, Hatake sees Alan taking his brother for a full examination and expresses concern about his possible escape, but Alan reminds him that his brother surrendered himself, unlikely to run anywhere. Nonetheless, Hatake insists on transferring Peter to level 0 R. Alan approves turning it into an isolator, when Julia suddenly notices changes on her skin in the mirror. But it turns out to be, just visions. While the men are discussing the setup of the isolator, one of the infected women approaches them asking for help, but a guard shoots the woman. Alan instantly rushes to help, removing the bullet right in the corridor, thus saving her life. He is outraged by the guard's action, but Hataki defends him. At the same time, Julia notices Peter's lips moving, but she is distracted by Alan's arrival, who instructs his team to prove the transmission of the virus from a monkey, which will help create a vaccine. Later, Julia notices Sarah's tremor, but Sarah dismisses it as fatigue. Doreen and Sergio discover the disappearance of a monkey. The angry woman wants to go to Hataki, but Sergio promises to find another monkey. Julia takes blood from Peter and expresses her regret about what happened to them. At the same time, Sergio shows Doreen a cemetery of frozen monkeys, and the woman notices the fear on their faces. She tries to find out who Sergio really is while he takes samples from their bodies. Sarah shows Julia an enzyme she isolated, which can identify the infected. Julia suggests testing it on herself, but Sarah goes to report the achievement to Alan. Then Julia conducts the test herself and finds nothing dangerous. At the same time, another escapee is found, demanding the drug Sodra created by his colleagues. But, the scientist's colleagues refute his claims. Doreen investigates a fragment of another monkey's body, and suddenly the virus cells begin to rapidly proliferate. The woman manages to freeze the dangerous organism, and Sergio asks her not to tell anyone. Simultaneously, Alan demands Hatake provide data on Sodra, which supposedly destroys any virus with a 100% probability but Hatake assures him that almost all the test animals died, meaning Sodra is a myth. Meanwhile, the scientists begin testing the station's inhabitants, discovering that 43 people are infected. They are kept in quarantine, but as they leave the isolation ward, the woman who was recently injured attacks the guards. Possessing incredible strength, she scatters the men and escapes. Julia starts suspecting Sarah of being infected, and Sarah conducts a test on herself. Seeing the negative result, Julia apologizes, just as security reports the attack and death of their colleague at the hands of the escaped woman. Panic starts among the isolated, then the dangerous woman attacks another guard, and seeing how she brings her face close to her victim, Julia remembers Peter's attack on her. The infected woman lunges at Julia and is killed by Alan's gunshot. Julia shows him her wounded palm, with black blood. Later, Alan informs Hatake of his intention to ask for military assistance. Julia remembers her negative test and realizes it doesn't work. She plans to report this, but suddenly an explosion occurs and the internal communication is lost. The next day, people locked on level R decide to stop the air purification system to gain freedom. Julia argues against this decision and she is simply pushed out the door, where she suddenly sees a person in a gas mask beckoning her to follow but turning the corner she finds no one. It is discovered that the satellite dish is damaged by the explosion, and it's unknown who did it. Therefore Hatake refuses to release the locked-in people, not wanting to risk the others. Doreen admits that she can't say for sure who infected whom, whether the monkey infected the human or the human infected the monkey. 
Meanwhile, Alan sees his brother suffering and asks the local doctor to give Peter Sodra. Although it hasn't been tested on humans, he agrees. At the same time, Hatake expresses his outrage to Sergio, who blew up the dish, but Sergio is ready to do anything to hide from the world that Hatake created a completely different virus than he claimed. At that moment a message comes about the air filters being turned off. Hatake announces his wish to go down with a Daniel. Peter is injected Sodra, while Sergio confesses to Doreen that he is an agent of a special Pentagon unit, as it seems they created something like genetic weaponry here. At the same time, downstairs, Julia is attacked by one of the infected, but she is saved by an unknown person who turns out to be a woman named Jay, and she is one of the scientists working at the station. Peter's condition stabilizes, but he does not regain consciousness. Alan talks to him, recalling their terrible childhood when the boys had to defend themselves from their cruel alcoholic father. Back then, Peter was his support. Sarah has to admit to one of the station's inhabitants that she has cancer. Doreen receives astonishing results. The virus is definitely man-made. Simultaneously, Peter suddenly regains consciousness, and Sarah confesses to Alan that the tests don't work. This means there are doubts about whether everyone on the lower level is sick. Hataki and Daniel descend a secret staircase. Peter assures Alan that he was engaged in sheer nonsense here, but then it turns out that Sodra had no effect. With his last strength, he admits that Hatake was very interested in Julia. He asks his brother for forgiveness and dies. Doctors manage to restart Peter's heart, but his brain activity is zero. Meanwhile, downstairs, Julia and Jay notice initials and drawings on the wall. Shocked, Julia recognizes her handwriting and drawing style, but she's never been here before. Hatake and Daniel find the group of isolated people at the purification devices and convince them to drop their weapons. After waiting for the devices to be turned on, Hatake suddenly pulls out a gun and kills all three. Then he leaves, instructing the boy to remove the bodies. At that moment, Doreen tells Sergio that, according to her research, there has been a fusion of the virus DNA with human DNA. And it's an entirely unknown chain. It turns out that the people who develop the virus want to change humans from the inside. She plans to show this to Alan, but Sergio suddenly injects her with a drug, causing her to lose consciousness. Simultaneously, Hataki encounters an infected person in the corridor, but the latter suddenly retreats from him, as if afraid of the man. In the laboratory, Sergio knocks down shelves with rats on Doreen and leaves. After that, he burns the bodies of the dead monkeys and reports to his employers about the completion of the mission and readiness for evacuation. But in response, he receives an order to find and detain Dr. Feet. Only the boy has never heard this name before. However, he suddenly hears the screams of the burning monkeys. Alan reports that Sodra actually works on the virus, meaning that it might be possible to try to cure the isolated and infected. Simultaneously, Sergio tries to find Dr. Fit in the station's network, but without success. Daniel catches the major in the act and starts suspecting Sergio. At the same time, Hatake inflicts a knife wound on himself. Meanwhile, on level R, Julia and Jay try to persuade people to let them inside, behind the safety of the doors, but the people are scared and refuse to open for them. Julia can't believe the reality of her drawings, as she is certain she has never been in this place. However, their conversation is interrupted by Hatake's appearance. Alan finds Doreen's body. Daniel suggests that the woman accidentally knocked the shelves over on herself, and the rats took advantage of it, but Alan is sure it was murder. He orders Dr. Deshaun to begin animal testing of Sodra. At this time, Hatake lies to the women, claiming he was attacked, and Julia agrees to escort him to the laboratory, though Jay is against it. Daniel and Alan go to review video recordings from Doreen's laboratory, but the files turn out to be damaged. At the same time, Sergio asks Dushan about Dr. Vitt, as they wrote a research paper together. But the scientist hasn't seen his colleague for a long time, reportedly because he developed an immunodeficiency and had to hide in a white room. The conversation is interrupted by Daniel, who accuses Sergio of killing Doreen and threatens that Alan will confirm this after the autopsy. At this time, Julia and Jay lead Hataki through an underground tunnel to the laboratory. Alan performs an autopsy on Doreen and finds a mark from an injection, which Sergio sees. Meanwhile, in the corridor, Julia is bandaging Hatake when they are attacked by an infected. 
Hatake manages to push Julia into a room and close the door, but Jay is left in the corridor. Simultaneously, Sergio tells Alan that Doreen had blood samples of a monkey given to her by Dr. Veet. Alan also starts looking for the unknown scientist, but Daniel doesn't know him and doesn't understand why Alan trusts Sergio so much. Hatake tells Julia that his daughter died in a fire. At the same time, Alan and Daniel search Sergio's room and find explosives and a satellite phone. In the last message, the Major reported that he had found fit and requested confirmation of the evacuation time. Daniel heeds outside, unaware that Sergio is following him. Dushan explains to Alan that the White Room refers to the Arctic. The scientist also hurries to the exit. There, Daniel reaches a place where Dr. Havit's head is buried in a transparent globe, but when he picks it up, Sergio attacks, knocks out the guard, and takes the globe. Hatake and Julia emerge into the corridor, where they are attacked by an infected. However, Jay knocks him out in turn. Simultaneously, Alan leaves the station. Jay then explains that she managed to hide, suddenly she mocks Hateki's story about his daughter. Julia is shocked, as Jay wasn't with them and couldn't have heard about the dead girl. Julia suddenly realizes that there is no Jay. She is hallucinating. Alan meets Sergio and accuses him of killing Doreen, but Sergio hits the doctor and throws him away from the rope indicator. Alan manages to recover and find the rope. He reaches the station while Sergio finds Daniel. He stabs him with a knife, removes his outer clothing, and leaves the major in the cold. Then he returns Vitt's head to its place. Julia unexpectedly encounters a girl with a doll in the corridor. Then Peter appears. Julia calls out to the girl who turns around, scaring Julia with a black mouth, but this too turns out to be a hallucination. Alan prepares to go down to level R for Julia, as she is the only specialist in such viruses. Julia, meanwhile, is getting worse but Hadaki's wound heals surprisingly fast. He admits that he didn't want to scare Julia, so he didn't say that Jay wasn't real, but then Julia suddenly loses consciousness. Alan and Sarah prepare explosives and use it to open a way down, where they are attacked by the infected. They are forced to return. At the same time, Sergio regains consciousness in an unknown place, chained to a bed. A girl appears, who turns out to be a police officer. She found him in the snow and brought him to a settlement. Meanwhile, under pressure from the scientist, Hatake admits to Alan that he developed a method of delivering medicine directly into the cell using the virus itself. This could help cure even incurable diseases, but Alan is sure that there's something inside the virus too, and sets off to find out. Daniel admits that he neutralized Sergio, which displeases Hatake, because now his masters will surely come here. Sergio tries to free himself, as Anana demands answers about the station. She is convinced that illegal activities are being conducted there, but the Major refuses to answer. Julia wakes up in a room where the familiar girl is playing. Peter is also sitting nearby and advises Julia to ask the girl questions. The girl confesses that her name is also Julia, and they are in a house in Montana where she comes to spend the summer with her mother. The woman recognizes the place where she grew up. Alan and Sarah conduct experiments on the virus and suddenly the substance begins to grow rapidly. The scientist has to freeze the unknown organism. It turns out that cold slows down the virus's action. They rush to Peter and surround his body with ice. Sarah remembers that there is a cryo laboratory on the lower level, and Alan hurries there. At this time, Sergio grabs Anana by the throat, trying to get free, then the girl leads him to a wall with pictures of children who have disappeared in the area. Alan finds Dr. Adrian, who studies body freezing. He shows rats living in a cryo solution. Sergio manages to remove his handcuffs when he sees Anana greeting Daniel, who has come to her, but Sergio attacks him with a knife. The girl points a gun at him, not understanding what happened, because this is her brother, Toluk. Anana shows him photos of her twin brothers, one of whom disappeared when he was only four years old. Julia discovers a festively set table where everyone who has been around her lately is sitting. She can't understand why they gathered in the house where she grew up. Simultaneously, Dr. Adrian injects cryo-solution into Peter's lungs. He starts breathing the liquid. Hatake sees this and asks Daniel to show him Sergio's body, but it is not there. However, people see the lights of a helicopter, and an announcement about the arrival of the Illyria Corporation spreads through the station. Julia feels a headache and her eyes change color, becoming silvery. 
Alan, Sarah, and Hatake meet the arrivals led by Constance, the head of the Illyria department, who announces they have come to help. Alan first demands the return of Julia from the lower level, as she is the only specialist of her caliber. Constance asks Hatake for a private conversation during which she behaves very rudely. The leadership asks for two things, to make the virus and its cure because the time has come to thin out the Earth's population, but the doctor only accomplished the first, which is meaningless without the second. Moreover, it turns out that there is a strain bee, which turns people into monsters, and such was never discussed. Her people will extract Julia, after which all others will be destroyed. And Hatake knew about this from the beginning. Anana is driving Sergio to the station, and Alan confesses to Sarah that he does not trust Constance and does not want to show them the cure they found. Julia takes her blood and rejoices at the disappearance of the symptoms but immediately experiences a severe headache when she looks in the mirror. Recovering, she bandages her eyes and confesses to the imaginary Peter that she will try to save the infected with her blood. She believes she sees him because her eyes have changed. The ghost suggests a solution, maybe she is the first to be cured. At this time, Hatake looks at photos of Julia when Daniel tells him about Constance setting him against the master. Hatake asks him to help prevent anyone from reaching Julia. Anana and Sergio reach the station, where they are seen by Daniel. The girl throws herself at his neck and shows a photo of his twin brother, but Daniel does not believe the girl and orders Sergio to be taken away. Meanwhile, an infected breaks into Julia's room, but she tears off her bandages, and the monster, seeing her eyes, flees in fear. At this time Hatake catches Constance in his office with Julia's photo in her hands. She wants to know why the woman is so important and plans to go down to the lower level herself, removing her lenses to reveal that she has the same silvery eyes. The woman gathers her people, and Alan also joins her team when he sees Sergio and rushes into a fight, which Constance stops. She beats him for killing the scientist she needed. It turns out she sent him to follow Hatake, but he messed everything up, and still, she loves him but refuses to remove the handcuffs. Hatake goes down to Julia, and she tells him about her eyes. He puts a bandage on her and asks her to come with him because only he can protect her. Constance orders everyone except Julia to be shot, and her team enters level R, but the infected are too strong and fast, and there are too many of them. The soldiers start dying one after the other, so the woman orders a retreat, convinced that Julia is either dead or turned into a monster. Daniel takes Anana to an office without cameras, and she again shows the photo of their family and talks about their parents and brother. At the same time, Hatake is bringing Julia to his office, where Daniel and Anana, who accuses Hatake of child theft, are already waiting. The guard orders Julia to be taken to the laboratory while he stays with the master. Julia in the laboratory takes out contact lenses given to her by Hatake when Alan enters. He is happy to see her, and all signs of the disease have disappeared except for the silver eyes. And none of them know that the infected have found a way to the upper levels. At the moment, they are making their way through the ventilation, while Julia tells Sarah and Alan that Hatake saved her. Then, an alarm sounds, and Alan goes to the warehouse, where an infected climbed for some reason. He and Daniel find spoiled food, and realize that the infected intended to contaminate it. Sarah takes blood from Julia, and she shows her her eyes, Constance examines the photos found at the Hatake's and cannot understand Julia's value. Alan, trying to figure out how Hatake extracted her from level R, is concerned about Julia's safety. If Constance learns she has overcome the virus, Julia will be immediately taken to Illyria for research. Constance bursts into Julia's room and orders her capture. To Alan, who arrives, she declares that Julia now belongs to the corporation, Daniel dresses Anana in a station staff uniform and leads her to the room where Sergio is held. The girl intends to obtain lists of all the kidnapped children, but the major advises her to run away. He confesses that he is a murderer and child kidnapper. Anana leaves dropping a medical needle. Constance interrogates Hataki about what he did to Julia, why her eyes are like theirs, but the doctor assures her that it's all a natural mutation. At this time Sarah admits to Alan that there are no new components in Julia's blood. And Julia herself is escaping into the ventilation system, which is immediately reported to Constance, who orders to find her and continues to interrogate Hataki about his interest in Julia. She is moving through the ventilation duct when an infected catches up with her but, after sniffing, leaves. Alan asks a guard to bring some substances for their work. 
and Sergio removes his handcuffs using the needle. Meanwhile, Daniel escorts his sister to the exit because he intends to stay and correct what he did under Hatake's leadership. Anana gives him a photo and leaves. Alan is making an explosive device when Julia reaches the laboratory and talks to her friends through the grate. The scientist asks her to free Hataki so he can regain control of the base when they kill Constance. They then call the boss and offer to look at the results under the microscope. She leans over the eyepiece when her guard begins to suspect something and pushes the woman away just as the explosion happens. An alarm is activated and Alan and Sarah flee and hide in another room. Then, Constance's voice is heard on the radio, announcing she was not hurt in the explosion but is very angry. She orders the doctor to surrender or she will kill Peter. Alan is about to comply with the demand when Sarah notices a sonic cannon and suggests using it. Julia reaches Hatake and frees him. He insists she hide, and when she refuses, he knocks her out with an injection. Anana catches Sergio at her snowmobile. The boy tries to start it without a key, and they get into an argument. Their heated exchange is interrupted by Constance's guards. Sergio orders the girl to escape while he surrenders. Julia regains consciousness and finds her childhood photo with Hatake. Alan confronts Constance, who disconnects Peter and orders Alan's execution, but then the sonic cannon is activated by Sarah. Infected emerge from the ventilation, taking Peter away, while Hatake leads Alan away. They discover Julia's disappearance. She has fallen into Constance's hands, who orders her preparation for transport. Daniel finds Hatake and informs him of this. The doctor asks him to take care of Julia's liberation, which Constance takes upon herself. Meanwhile, Julia is bound and placed in a wooden crate. Hatake confronts Constance in her room. Their conversation reveals they were once close. Constance accuses him of betraying their vows to save his daughter. She shows the photo taken from Julia, triggering Hatake to attack her. Later, Daniel restores order on the base, arresting Constance's remaining people and freeing Julia, who doesn't understand why her blood has no antibodies. Hatake places Constance's head in a glass globe. The next day, Alan, Sarah, and Daniel capture an infected and take him to the cryo laboratory. It remains a mystery where the rest went after kidnapping Peter, as level R is completely empty. Hatake admits there is another level below where the original virus samples he created are stored. Alan can't accept that Hataka willingly agreed to create an apocalyptic virus for a corporation, which is a crime against humanity, but Hatake fears things will get even worse, as Illyria will send an army. Then Alan suggests going down to destroy the virus, while Daniel looks for ways to get there. Hatake confesses he knew Julia's mother, and the photo was taken when he visited them in Montana. Constance's surviving assistant is put in a cell with Sergio and Daniel accesses level X where all the infected behaving like a swarm with Peter as the leader are located. In the cryolab, scientists discover that cold affects the infected like a sedative. Constance's assistant tells Sergio that a squad was sent to destroy the entire village following Anana's trail. Alan develops a plan to shut off the power supply, causing the base's air temperature to drop. Then they can go down and destroy the virus. The group begins to execute the plan. Alan and Julia descend via Hadake's private staircase, while Sarah and the doctor turn off the electricity and cold air flows inside. Then, Sarah confesses to Hatake that she will soon die. Sergio, taking advantage of the power outage, opens the cell doors. Meanwhile, Julia and Alan reach level X, see the frozen zombies, and walk past them. They find themselves in a storage room, astonished by the abundance of vials. It turns out that strains of all the most dangerous diseases ever on earth are collected here. At the same time, Sergio kills a soldier and takes his clothes. When it's time to turn the electricity back on, Sarah loses consciousness. Julia finds an empty vial of the virus. The infected begin to wake up, and the pair has to leave empty-handed. Daniel catches up with Sergio, who tells him about the danger to Anana's village. The men set off. Alan and Julia struggle to get through the reviving zombies and then see another level below marked with Julia's initials. The pair descends and discovers Julia's house. Anana goes out to meet Sergio and Daniel. She saw three snowmobiles and now knows these are the killers. The trio races to the village. Meanwhile, at the base, Alan can't understand why an exact replica of Julia's house is built here. Anana, Daniel, and Sergio arrive at the village and see its residents being herded into a van, apparently to be burned alive. 
Sergio, using his uniform, leads Anana as a prisoner to the van, presenting Daniel as his man. As they approach, Anana's brother sees his duplicate and stops in astonishment. Daniel hits him and knocks him down in the snow. Hatake examines Sarah and finds surgery scars. Julia and Alan are surrounded by the infected, led by Peter. Julia steps forward and holds back the infected. In the village, soldiers douse the van with fuel, but then Sergio signals, and he, Anana, and Daniel shoot the soldiers. Julia and Alan reach Hataki's office, not understanding why the infected are afraid of her. In the village, the two brothers meet. Hatake announces Sarah's illness and is surprised that her boss didn't know about it. He is also astonished at the disappearance of the virus from storage. Sarah is connected to a life support machine. Later, Julia questions Hataki, who removes his lenses and finally admits that he is her father. Dr. Adrian hides the stolen virus in his bag and leaves the station. The next day, Alan prepares Sarah for tomography when Hataki tells Julia about her mother, who left the base after learning about the kidnapping of Eskimo children, who were given to childless families after experiments. Hatake had been following his daughter's achievements and was proud of her. Meanwhile, in the village, Sergio asks Anana to lead the people away because Illyria won't stop. At the base, Julia tells Alan everything she learned, and he rushes to Hatake. However, the doctor shows him camera footage of Adrian stealing the virus. The group discusses possible escape routes and realizes that the only option is an abandoned space listening station a few miles away. Julia and Alan go there, and upon arrival, they hear Adrian's radio communication with Illyria's leadership. They manage to take the virus and tie up the doctor. In the village, it's discovered that a snowmobile and one of the soldiers are missing. Daniel urges to speed up the evacuation, and he decides to return to the base to stop the Punishers. In the laboratory, Hatake shows Sarah anomalies in Julia's blood that she hadn't noticed before. Julia broadcasts a radio message asking for help from the mainland, but at that moment a shot is fired, killing Adrian. Alan and Julia manage to hide, but the unknown shooter destroys the radio station. He demands the virus, making the couple realize that they won't be allowed to leave alive. At the same time, Sarah records a video of her conclusions about the changes in Julia's DNA and plans to experiment on herself. Meanwhile, at the station, Alan finds an entrance to the basement, and they go down, hearing a voice. They are horrified to find a man with silver eyes, named Gunner, chained up. He recognizes traits in Julia and informs her that she can live four days without water and forty without food. They are reborn, and when they discovered these properties, they thought they had a gift. It turned out to be a curse of eternal life. Then, hearing noises from above, Alan decides to hide the virus in the basement. Sarah doesn't get to carry out her experiment and falls into a coma. In the basement, Gunnar confesses to Julia that Hatake chained him there 29 years ago, and when he asks to be freed, he means death. Julia attempts to cut the chain, but Gunnar impales himself on the cutters and dies. Then, an Illyria cleaner catches the pair, drags them upstairs, and, not finding the virus, demands it at gunpoint. Unexpectedly, Daniel comes to their rescue. Alan sets the building on fire, confident that the virus will perish in the flames, and the people return to the base. Julia tells Hatake that they were at the station and met Gunnar. The doctor admits that Gunnar was responsible for Julia's mother's death, for which he imprisoned him. And Illyria is controlled by 500 immortals. At that moment, Sarah starts dying. Hatake offers to do what she wanted herself. Meanwhile, it turns out that the virus was not destroyed but stolen by Julia. The next day, Sarah receives a treatment made from Julia's spinal fluid, and her tumor begins to shrink. However, a new problem arises. The remaining uninfected people start disappearing, and Hatake, anticipating an attack from Illyria, decides to mine the station. Discussing the abductions, Alan concludes that the zombies are luring people using traps and baits, indicating their evolution and an impending attack with possible use of weapons. Hatake informs about mining the base and suggests blowing it up, then descending to a secret bunker on the lowest level. But while they prepare for evacuation, all remaining uninfected are hidden in the solarium, believing zombies can't get in there. Daniel feels slighted as his father didn't tell him about the secret bunker. However, Hatake asks for his help, and the boy conceals his feelings. 
Julia synthesizes a cure from the original strain and her blood, aiming to make the virus destroy itself. Alan becomes furious upon learning that the virus is with her, but Julia reminds him that this way, they can save the infected. At this time, zombies are extracting blood from kidnapped humans, adding their infected blood to it. Hatake shows Daniel Julia's dollhouse, causing a sharp negative reaction in Daniel, who feels betrayed. Learning that Julia is Hatake's biological daughter, he becomes enraged and vows to destroy the base himself. At this time, Peter injects the infected blood into the fire suppression system and opens the main valve. Black liquid pours over people, turning them into monsters. Later Alan discovers the disappearance of everyone they hid in the solarium. Julia notes that the infected act in intelligently and in unison so Hatake insists on their complete destruction, but Alan and Julia advocate for treatment, especially since the means already exist, but how to administer it to the infected. Daniel comes to the help, having developed a portable sprayer that can treat the sick with freezing substances and administer the vaccine. Hatake and Julia descend to the infected and first treat Peter, then the others. People start to come to their senses. However, Sarah suddenly feels a headache, and Alan begins to worry that her cancer has returned. Peter also regains consciousness. Then, an alert about Illyria's arrival at the station is triggered. People start being lowered into the bunker. Daniel, Hatake, and Alan go to meet the military. They see many lights, which unexpectedly go out before reaching the station. The men approach and realize these are only drones, then an explosion occurs, injuring Hataki, and parachuting attackers start to descend. Hataki is brought back to the base, and he insists on blowing everything up without waiting for the evacuation, because the most fearsome Illyria assassin, the Scythe, has arrived. And he is the worst of the immortals. Meanwhile, in the elevator where the last of the survivors are gathered, three soldiers enter, bringing joy to the survivors, thinking help has arrived. But downstairs, the same three soldiers exit the elevator, leaving behind a bloody mess. At this time, in the bunker, Sarah feels a severe headache, and Julia discovers she has symptoms of silver eyes. Realizing that they can't wait any longer, Daniel activates the explosives, but there is no explosion. The Scythe orders his subordinates to find the virus and destroy everyone on the base. Later, the Scythe contacts the leadership and receives orders to deliver the virus and Hataki alive. Daniel finds bodies in the elevator and prepares to take down the killer. Peter, gradually gaining strength and horrified by what he sees, realizes he too was a monster. Alan proposes luring the killers out to deal with them. Below, Sarah, realizing she has become immortal after treatment, assesses the prospects of the next thousand years. She and Julia make plans, although they understand that they will outlive all their loved ones. Sergio evacuates the villagers, but Anana's brother doesn't trust the major. At the base, Hatake tells about Scythe, the most dreadful executioner of Illyria, despite his youthful appearance. Scythe, meanwhile, is monitoring Hatake's office. Suddenly, noise comes from a box brought by the killers, and Scythe orders the captive to be silenced, but the executioner is distracted by camera footage showing Hatake killing Constance, revealing that he is her son. Later, Scythe eavesdrops on a conversation in Hatake's office, where Alan announces they will go after the virus, while Daniel distracts the killers. In the village, Toluk orders Sergio to leave if he cares for Anana. Alan and Hatake reach the head cemetery, where a tube supposedly containing the virus is hidden in one of the capsules. They are stopped by Scythe and his subordinates, but it turns out to be a trap, catching only one assistant. Scythe and the other killer escape. An enraged Scythe re-watches the moment of his mother's murder and hears that Julia is Hatake's daughter. He cuts off the power and manages to kidnap her right from the elevator. Alan rushes to save her when Scythe sends them her finger, demanding Hatake surrender. The scientist announces his readiness to do so. Alan and Peter decide to neutralize Scythe by filling the ventilation with tear gas, allowing Hatake to extract Julia using a gas mask. Julia regains consciousness and finds an explosive device around her neck. Sarah discovers the disappearance of the virus vials in Daniel's absence, who informs Scythe that he has what's needed. Simultaneously, Alan and Peter reach the designated place, but Hatake suddenly refuses to follow the plan and surrenders. He begs Scythe to release his daughter, but Scythe shows him Julia and Daniel, forcing the father to choose between his daughter's life and his adopted son. The killer starts a countdown, and then Daniel sacrifices himself. 
Alan and Peter burst into the room and neutralize Scythe. Hatake weeps while Julia sees a video of the room where the executioner's assistant opens a box containing her mother. Julia demands to know where they are holding the captive, but Scythe only laughs in response. Then she goes to Hataki, crying over Daniel's body. The man confesses that he made the virus because he was threatened with his wife's death. Anana and Toluk search unsuccessfully for Sergio. In the bunker below, one of the doctors suggests Sarah have her tests checked, as she isn't feeling well. At the same time, Alan and Peter offer Scythe of a trade. He tells them where Julia's mother is and they will let him go. The boy laughs, as they clearly haven't watched the news. The brothers turn on a gadget and learn that the virus has somehow left the base and spread to a separate island. The men suspect Sergio, who at that moment loses consciousness, almost reaching the base. He wakes up inside. It turns out he was saved by Scythe's assistant, who has the virus, and now needs help in clearing the base. The scientists gather to discuss the situation. It's clear that the island was chosen to demonstrate Illyria's power to the world, but having the cure, they can stop it. Alan, Julia, and Hatake go to the cell where Scythe's assistant and Sergio are, but the Major neutralizes the killer. Learning that Julia's mother is in the box, the boy allows her to open it. He denies his involvement in infecting the island and demands a full list of children kidnapped by Hatake in exchange for the virus which he now has. He kills Scythe's assistant, showing he doesn't work for Illyria. The doctor takes Sarah's samples, and she runs away, fearing her cancer has returned. Hatake dictates the list of kidnapped children, knowing and remembering each one, while Julia frees her mother. Sergio writes the names and returns the virus and cure, while Peter confronts Scythe, who reminds him of all his failures, including that Julia chose his brother. The man grabs a knife and releases the killer. It turns out he has been working for Illyria all along and was the one who took the virus off the base. Scythe knocks him out. Julia's mother recognizes her daughter. Her mind is intact, unlike her body. She confesses she loved her husband deeply. At that moment Hadake appears and kisses his newly found wife. Then an intrusion alarm sounds. Hatake, Alan and Sarah rush to the entrance, but it turns out to be Eskimos who heard the scientists needed help. Anana and Toluk learn about their brother's death when a bloodied Peter appears and reports Scythe's escape. Alan announces an evacuation and hands the virus to Julia, who kisses him goodbye. The doctor examining Sarah tells her that she's pregnant. People prepare to leave. Alan opens the gates, behind which Scythe appears with a detonator in hand. Alan screams, but an explosion occurs. The scientist, almost outside, remains unharmed while Scythe pulls Julia, holding the virus and cure, out of the fire. Julia's mother emerges from the flames, begging for her daughter's release, but Scythe kills her to the cries of the wounded Hatake. At that moment, an Illyria helicopter descends. Scythe drags Julia into it, and Alan throws in Constance's head. Seeing it, Scythe releases the woman. Alan jumps into the rising helicopter, but Julia, already shackled, hands him the virus container and pushes him out, asking him to find her. Falling into the snow, the scientist watches the helicopter fly away. Time passes. In a European city, Alan sits in a cafe reading a newspaper describing the virus's effect, turning people into predators. He receives a note with an address and leaves a customary sign on the wall before rushing to meet Peter, admitting he found Julia. Meanwhile, in a richly furnished office, a meeting of people with silver eyes begins, led by Julia. This concludes the first season.